Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for your kind introduction. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. So in the next 25 minutes, I want you to become familiar with the different imaging appearances of adrenal masses, including pathological relation. And uh, I would like to show you how to differentiate between benign and malignant lesions and show you the, different, the value of the different imaging techniques. And last but not least, I want you to understand the impact of imaging given that the patient has or has not a known malignancy. From increased use of imaging techniques, we learned that up to 5% of individuals present with adrenal masses, so-called incidental adrenal lesions. And God thanks, Song and co-workers showed that most of these incidental lomas are benign lesions. However, sometimes adrenal lesions can be functional lesions, and in rare cases, there could be the possibility of cancer, either primary or metastatic. If the lesions are functioning, they can cause Cushing syndrome, Conn syndrome, Edison disease, adrogenital syndromes, especially if there is an overproduction of sex steroid hormones. Uh, and when it comes to the uh, practical approach of a uh, characterizing adrenal lesions. Let me start a little bit unconventionally with a female patient diagnosed with breast cancer. And uh, on a staging CD, uh, a right adrenal mass was diagnosed. So uh, it is of major impact of according the, therapo the therapeutic approach if this lesion proves to be a benign lesion or a malignant lesion, or in this patient with underlying lung cancer, if this small right adrenal mass uh, proves to be no metastasis, the primary lesion can be surgically removed and a curative therapy can be performed. However, if this small lesion proves to be a metastasis, the lung lesion now is inoperable and a palliative therapy has to be performed. And we know that up to 50% of adrenal lesions in patients with underlying cancer prove to be of metastatic origin. So how to approach? Well, a good advice from an old radiologist like me is ask always uh, for prior images. If we are lucky and we have got some prior images, either CT or MRI, and uh, if these images show a pre-existing lesions with a, uh, no increase of size, it's most likely an adenoma. However, if there is an increase in size, think about metastasis. What about morphologic features in uh, incidental lomas? Can size, shape, or heterogeneity be, be of help? Well, unfortunately, they are usually not helpful. So we do need better tests with higher sensitivity and higher specificity. Uh, and we do have these tests because most of adenomas contain a lot of intracytoplasmic lipids, and we can characterize these lipids either by uh, doing density readings on unenhanced CT, including CT histogram analysis techniques, or we can also use chemical shift uh, MRI techniques to prove these uh, uh, lipids. Boland and co-workers showed that using a threshold value of 10 Hounsfield units on unenhanced CT studies, this is associated with a very high sensitivity and specificity specificity in characterizing adrenal adenomas. And uh, this is a straightforward lesion. Uh, another female uh, patient diagnosed with breast cancer, you see on unenhanced CT a right adrenal lesion with four Hounsfield units on unenhanced CT. This is clearly indicating an adrenal adenoma, a benign lesion. We can uh, do also chemical shift MRI uh, in this particular patient with underlying colon cancer. We do the in and opposed phase, and you, if you see a signal drop in, on the opposed phase image, this is clearly indicative of an adrenal adenoma. So if we have a drop of signal intensity of at least 25%, uh, this indicates uh, the presence of an adenoma. You can also perform quantitative analysis by calculating the signal intensity index. If this index is below 20, uh, it's most likely a benign lesion, most likely an adenoma. You can also calculate the adrenal to spleen ratio if it is below 0.7. Uh, 
7, we are dealing with a uh, benign lesion. Unfortunately, up to 30% of adrenal adenomas remain indeterminate. Why? Because they are lipid poor, and these lipid sensitive, sensitive, sensitive techniques do not work. So we need other examinations. Do we have this? Yeah, we have better alternatives, either by calculating CT histograms. Uh, we can also perform a delayed enhanced series, and we can perform dynamic contrast enhanced imaging. Let me show you an example. This was a, a patient diagnosed with uh, seminoma, and on the staging CT, on an unenhanced CT, he presented with a right adrenal mass, 31 Hounsfield units on unenhanced. This is not really indicating a benign lesion. So uh, we started to do a CT histogram analysis, and this uh, CT histogram analysis determines negative pixels. That means all pixels within the lesions are calculated within a, a specific ROI. And by using a 10% uh, threshold value, it has been shown that this technique is very uh, sensitive. It is even uh, more sensitive compared to the use of the 10 Hounsfield units threshold value uh, with the unenhanced CT. And in this particular patient, we did this calculation. We showed that 25% of pixels uh, proved to be of fatty content, and this was indicating a benign lesion, which was proved as an adenoma. What about delayed contrast-enhanced CT? Boland and co-workers showed that malignant lesions, metastasis, have a significantly higher density compared to benign lesions or adenomas. And there is a lot of literature. However, there is no unique uh, threshold value. Different authors used different threshold values and also different time windows. And Unfortunately, again, with the use of absolute uh, values, there's always uh, the problem with misinterpretation in case of borderline enhancement. Uh, these absolute values are also dependent on the different types of CT scanners, on patient factors, on the uh, contrast material use, and uh, even uh, dependent on different delivery rates. So it has been proven that calculating the washout is much more precise and more sensitive and specific. Uh, nowadays, you don't have to keep these uh, formulas in mind, the absolute and relative uh, percentage washout. Just Google, look for absolute and relative percentage washout, and within a few seconds, you get, will get the formulas. You can uh, put in these uh, numbers, and uh, the computer will uh, show you the uh, absolute and relative washout. What you have to know is if the uh, are the figures of the absolute and relative washout. If the absolute washout is above 60%, it's very likely that this lesion is benign, or if the relative washout is above 40%. So these uh, numbers you have to keep in mind. I'd like to show you uh, an example. This was a patient diagnosed with pharyngeal carcinoma presenting with a large right adrenal lesion, 28 Hounsfield units on unenhanced CT, clearly not indicating a benign lesion. Well, we performed the uh, contrast-enhanced dynamic studies and calculated the absolute washout, and the uh, absolute washout proved to be 81%. That's clearly above 60%, indicating a benign lesion. And also, uh, the relative percentage washout with a uh, 46% is clearly above 40%, again indicating a benign lesion, and this proved to be an adrenal adenoma. Unfortunately, this uh, small right adrenal lesion in a patient diagnosed with melanoma, uh, 38 Townsfield units on unenhanced CT, and an absolute washout of 28% and a relative uh, percentage washout of 17% is not indicating a benign lesion. Unfortunately, this is really uh, indicating the presence of metastasis. 
and it proved to be a metastasis. If there is no underlying disease, uh, malignant disease, and we have uh, absolute uh, uh, washout and relative washout indicating a malignant lesion, think about a primary uh, arising from the adrenals. In this particular case, it proved to be an adrenal cortical carcinomas. But these are really uh, very, very rare uh, lesions of adrenals. What about dynamic contrast-enhanced MRI? Well, it works similar as uh, with contrast-enhanced CD. Uh, we also have to perform a 15 minutes delayed series, and if the washout is above 40%, it's clearly indicating a benign lesion. Comparing a contrast-enhanced CD and contrast-enhanced MRI, what is better? Well, uh, it's comparable. The sensitivity and specificity is equal. However, uh, it's still not 100%. We know that nothing is 100% probably in radiology, but uh, there is still some space uh, to improve our performance. And uh, nowadays, there are additional techniques we can use. And this is uh, the PET-CD. Uh, how useful is PET-CD? Uh, PET-CD combines uh, complementary modalities which allow a precise structural and functional characterizing, characterization of adrenal lesions. And uh, Poland and co-workers showed that uh, especially FDG PET is very uh, highly sensitive and specific uh, according differentiation between malignant and benign uh, lesions, especially if there is an underlying cancer. And it is not dependent on the imaging device you use. And the good news is also that uh, you can perform the visual analysis. It's not... Uh, in the, not uh, only dependent on calculation of the standard optic value or the standard optic ratio. So let me show you an example. This is a patient with an underlying rectal cancer presenting with a small right adrenal mass, uh, and there is clearly an increased uh, uptake of the tracer, FTG tracer, indicating the presence of metastasis. So as a general rule, we can say if the uptake, the tracer uptake, is below the uptake, uh, the tracer uptake in the liver, it's uh, very likely that we are dealing with a benign lesion. If the tracer uptake is equal to the tracer uptake in the liver, it is still probably a benign lesion, most likely a benign lesion. If the tracer uptake is slightly higher than uh, com uh, com in comparison to the liver, we are dealing with an indeterminate lesion. And if the uptake, the tracer uptake is higher compared to the tracer uptake in the liver, it's most likely a malignant lesion, a metastasis. And as I already mentioned, uh, Jak Tieni and co-workers also showed that the visual analysis of the tracer uptake is as effective as calculating the standard uptake ratio or the standard uptake value. Let me show you some examples. Um, this is a 70 years old patient diagnosed with rectal cancer, and on a staging CD, the patient uh, was diagnosed with this uh, bilateral adrenal masses. We did a PET CD, and PET CD showed increased tracer uptake, FDG tracer uptake, uh, in both of these adrenal lesions. You see the coronal images here. There's a lot of uh, tracer uptake, especially in the periphery of the lesion, not so much in the necrotic areas. Uh, however, uh, this is really indicating the presence of metastasis. And this was proven histologically. This is another patient diagnosed with thyroid cancer, and uh, he had also positive cervical lymph nodes, and additionally he presented with this right adrenal mass. Is it a benign lesion or is it a, a malignant lesion? This really has another impact uh, according to the therapeutic approach. Uh, what do you think? It doesn't really look benign from the conventional CT images. We performed PET CT, and there was... Uh, a little bit uptake of tracer, but uh, just a little bit uh, higher than the liver. Uh, and 
it was initially diagnosed as indeterminate, however it proved to be an adenoma. This was another patient diagnosed with uh, Hodgkin's disease, stadium 3, uh, disease above and below the uh, diaphragm. And additionally, this patient presented with a small right adrenal mass. Is it uh, part of the lymphoma or is it a benign lesion? We did a PET CT imaging and this uh, lesion didn't take up any tracer, so we could say this is a benign adrenal lesion and it proved to be an adenoma. This was another patient with an incidentaloma, so this was a diagnosis by chance. Uh, on this left adrenal mass, and it was a small mass. Uh, we performed PET CT, and uh, this lesion uh, had showed a really very much increased uh, uptake of the tracer. And uh, this proved to be a malignant disease, it proved to be a lymphoma uh, in this particular patient, a primary uh, non Hodgkin lymphoma of the left adrenal gland. The patient was. Uh, uh, underwent therapy, chemotherapy, and in a four months follow-up, this lesion has completely disappeared. Unfortunately, there are also some limitations with PET-CD, especially with small lesions, small metastases. There may be a lack of a tracer uptake. Uh, another limitation is if the uh, lesion proves to be hemorrhagic or necrotic. And unfortunately, there are also non FDG avid uh, primaries like uh, RCC, renal cell carcinoma, carcinoids, or the bronchial alveolar carcinoma. These uh, primaries do not take up any FDG, and uh, nor do the metastasis of these lesions, of course. Uh, and uh, there may also be some false positives. There may be some FDG avid adenomas or hyperplasias. Uh, it has also been shown that pheochromocytomas in very, very rare cases uh, may show an increased uh, tracer uptake. And uh, also uh, in infectious disease, there is a lot of tracer uptake in adrenal lesions. After surgery or radiation, we see an increased tracer uptake as well. As well, and uh, also it is well known that brown fat uh, is uh, taking up the FDG tracer. What about uh, diffusion-weighted imaging? Can, uh, can diffusion-weighted imaging on MRI be helpful in characterizing adrenal lesions? Uh, well. Um, it has been shown by a major study of Miller and co-workers that unfortunately adrenal lesions, uh, that DBI is not very helpful in characterizing uh, adrenal lesions except for adrenal cysts. But it has been shown that especially the ADC values of uh, adrenal cysts differ significantly, but uh, otherwise there is a wide range of ADCs uh, in adrenal adenomas. And there is no significant difference between adenomas and malignant lesions. There is also no significant difference between metastasis and adrenal carcinomas. Uh, also no significant difference between malignant lesions and pheochromocytomas and uh, neuroblastomas. No significant difference between lipid poor and lipid rich adenomas. So we cannot differentiate between lipid poor and lipid rich. And uh, there is no correlation between the percentage signal intensity decrease and the ADC values. So, uh, in summary, more or less, uh, it has been shown that the ADCs are not useful in the differentiation between benign and malignant adrenal lesions, and uh, that uh, diffusion-weighted imaging is not proved not to be helpful in differentiation between lipid-poor and lipid-rich adenomas. However, Nicolas Grenier has recently shown or some years ago, that there may be a value of DVI for the diagnosis of unilateral lymphoma. 
In summary, I can say that uh, according to the characterization of adrenal lesions, there's probably no test uh, which reaches a monopoly, that a unique test that says, well, that clearly says this is uh, benign or malignant. In some uh, cases, you always need further examinations. Non-contrast CT has uh, been proven to be very effective for characterizing of lipid-rich adenomas. CT washout studies um, have been shown to uh, be useful, especially in lipid-poor adenomas. And uh, if uh, these uh, figures are clear, then you can stop here. However, uh, despite modern imaging techniques, despite uh, these uh, washout calculations, there will probably remain uh, a min minority of lesions which will remain indeterminate. Uh, PET CT can be uh, of tremendous help, especially in patients with underlying cancers. However, a few adrenal lesions will still need biopsy. So, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.